Hello friends and welcome to the second part of this video tutorial series on plasma physics. In this part we are going to discuss about trajectory of charged particle in uniform magnetic and electric fields. We will also discuss about E cross B drift. And before we start here is the summary of part 1. In last video we have seen definition of plasma, importance of simulation, we have discussed Boris algorithm and our code. So let's start now. Trajectory of particle in uniform magnetic and electric field. So let's uh, consider a scenario where magnetic field is constant in Z direction, right? And uh, as electric field is zero in uh, this scenario, our Lorentz force takes the following form where E vector is zero. Now, if you solve this uh, differential equation, you will get this type of solution, right? And if you notice carefully, these are the equation of circle. How you may ask? So what you do is uh, square this equation what will uh, and add them. So what will you get? x minus x0 square plus y minus y0 square is equal to rl square. What is this rl? rl is the Larmor radius. And you may also find this uh, strange term omega c. By the way, this is omega c, not omega l. This is the typo error. So this omega c is the cyclotron frequency. Let's uh, understand the physical meaning of uh, this solution, means solution of this differential equation, right? Then I will discuss uh, this constant RL and uh, omega C. So I have made an animation for you guys. Here this is our X and this is our Y, right? And assume that uh, this R is our RL and this O is our omega. So with uh, this radius 1.5 and this omega uh, C value means a 0 0.05, let's uh, uh, run our simulation. This is the time scale by the way, this are T0. So yes, uh, focus on this point. It is moving very slowly on a circle. As I said, uh, this equation is equation of circle. So it is moving very slowly. Now let's uh, try to change uh, some parameters. Let's increase our omega value. Let's increase it to let's say uh, 0.45 and let's again run our simulation. So it is moving faster now, right? So this omega C is nothing but the angular velocity, right? And what will happen if I increase the value of R? Yes, you will. You are guessing it correct. It will increase or decrease the radius of our circle. Okay, so this is what happened, right? Let me go to my presentation. So, here's the more physical meaning of uh, this equation. See, this is the equation of cyclotron frequency this omega c not omega l okay so this omega c is basically qb by m what is this q q is the char uh, charge and m is the mass b is the magnetic field external magnetic field and this rl is our larmor radius this v perpendicular is the perpendicular component of particles uh, velocity this uh, V perpendicular is perpendicular to our magnetic field, right? So keep this thing in mind. And this omega C is our cyclotron frequency. Now consider this case. This is magnetic field free region as you can see here. And it has some velocity in this direction. Now such particle if enters in a uh, region having some finite magnetic field then this is what will happen if it has positive charge then it will turn 
like a counter in a counter clockwise direction and if it has a negative charge then it will move in a anti clockwise direction and obviously you are guessing it correct if it is a neutral particle means uh, if charge is equal to zero then uh, it won't interact with our magnetic field it will simply pass now let's uh, jump to our first uh, simulation so this example or say this exercise states that let's study the motion of positive and negative charge uh, charges in the presence of magnetic field initially they both have same position and velocity vector also plot the kinetic energy potential energy and total energy as a function of time so we know that this is what will happen our positive charge will move in a clockwise direction and our negative charge will move in a anti-clockwise direction but we want to uh, see in our simulation so let me jump to my uh, spider code as i discussed in last video this is my input.txt file so here in this file uh, i want to study one particle t max is 7 uh, units and dt is 10 raised to minus 3 units so this is the first example uh, particle is initially at origin at 0 0 0 and it has only Vx component okay and these are charge and mass m is equal to 1 unit and q is equal to 1 unit let's uh, run this file and initialize our uh, Boris algorithm as I said last time in this main.py file we have written our Boris algorithm and let me first uh, undock this file yes so this is my uh, magnetic fields function here bz component is one tesla and other bx and by are zero okay so this is my magnetic field let me again dock this thing so that i can run this thing okay so now let's uh, plot uh, our uh, data so fortunately our uh, energy is remaining constant may now means our simulation is correct let's uh, run the simulation as i said this keep 250 means i am skipping 250 points and uh, plotting it so let's see okay so it is moving in a clockwise direction see it is tracing a complete circle here this uh, colored dots are trajectory and this uh, blue vectors are velocity vectors at that point and as you can see here our total energy is remaining constant let's uh, try one more example but this time we will try negative charge let me uncomment this example this is our second example guys and uh, let me yes so by running this uh, initial.py i am initializing my boris algorithm and yes now i am uh, running plot data.py to see what will happen to our uh, negative charge so let's uh, run this do my work see this thing it is moving in a anti-clockwise direction and it is also tracing a complete circle so positive and negative charge both will uh, trace a complete uh, circle only difference is they will tra trace uh, either uh, clockwise or anti -clock move in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction so let's jump to our presentation uh, these are some interesting findings so from this energy gra graph we can conclude that magnetic field does no work okay it only turns the velocity vector as you may have seen okay the radius of 
the circle depends on the values of applied magnetic field mass and charge okay so it is clear from this equation that uh, it our larmer radius means our uh, radius of circle is depending on omega c okay and omega c depends on charge mass and magnetic field okay so it automatically depends on uh, all these quantities third point is cyclotron frequency will decide the angular velocity as you can may have noticed in this animation if i run this thing and change the value of omega it will uh, move faster or slower depending on the value of this omega c right so let me turn off this thing so these are some uh, interesting findings now let's see how we can uh, apply these concepts in actual experiment let's see some examples so uh, these are some interesting uh, experiments which directly uses this phenomenon this turning effect right so what you can do is uh, suppose this is our cloud chamber okay and uh, if you put here a radioactive source then what will happen is if your particle has some charge then uh, it will turn right in a magnetic field depending on the charge if it has a, a negative charge uh, it will move in a anti clockwise direction and if it has a negative sorry positive charge it will move in a clockwise direction now this second one is very interesting if you are uh, in your uh, bachelor's or masters you can do this uh, experiment this is the experiment of bubble chamber so what you can do is you can take some dry ice and uh, put radioactive source inside obviously inside a closed chamber then what you can uh, observe is you may see this uh, trajectory of this particles you may have seen this uh, secret lines right these are the particles having some charge and mass and if you apply magnetic field it will uh, trace a circular trajectory and these are some real photographs okay from actual experiment as you can see here this is our pion so what you can do is from uh, this photograph you can fit a circle on this uh, trajectory and uh, from this circle you can uh, find the rl rl means radius of the circle and as you know the energy you can find v perpendicular so now you know rl and v perpendicular so you can find omega c and from the omega c you can find charge upon mass ratio okay this is very important quantity in particle physics right so such uh, activities you can do with this uh, interesting concept now let's move to our second topic which is velocity parallel to the magnetic field now in previous case we have seen what will happen if our velocity component is perpendicular to the magnetic field that means uh, if a velocity compo sorry if magnetic field is in a z direction means in this uh, upper direction then uh, if it has a perpendicular vector means in a uh, uh, xy plane then it will turn that uh, velocity vector in counterclockwise or clockwise direction and in this uh, case we will see what will happen if uh, it has a velocity vector per parallel to our magnetic field so let's see what will happen so as i have written here if one component of velocity is parallel to the magnetic field it will perform a linear motion in the same direction of magnetic field and obviously it is uh, if it is a linear motion its equation can be written as this thing uh, here i am assuming that um, magnetic field is in z direction okay so what will be the equation z is equal to z0 plus 
vz into t okay z0 is our initial uh, z's position and you can visualize this th scenario as this thing suppose this uh, ray, obviously this entire thing is in a uh, three dimension so you can imagine like that so uh, this red vector is uh, our magnetic field and this uh, purple vector is our velocity uh, vector uh, velocity vector of our charged particle then we can divide this uh, vector into two parts okay one is parallel to magnetic field and other is perpendicular to magnetic field now uh, let me ask you uh, what will happen due to this component means due, due to this uh, parallel component it will perform a linear motion and due to this uh, perpendicular component it will trace a circle and what will happen if we combine both this motion yes you have guessed it correct it will trace a helix as you can see in this image uh, this are our magnetic field vector and as you can see here due to perpendicular component it is tracing a circle and it is also moving in a z direction and uh, overall it is tracing a helix let's uh, understand or say simulate this scenario in our uh, simulation let me okay let me see my inputs so yes for 15 units i have saved this thing let me comment this uh, example 2 and this is my example 3 positive charge with vx and vz component vx is our uh, perpendicular component and vz is our parallel component right so this is the initial position 0 0 minus 2 means uh, particle is initially at minus 2 uh, z position these are uh, velocity vectors vx vy and vz and this is simply mass and charge right let's initialize our Boris algorithm okay so magnetic field is a uh, one unit in z direction yes okay yes let's uh, plot our data now okay let's run this thing okay so fortunately this time also we are getting constant total energy means uh, this blue curve it is hidden somewhere behind this uh, orange curve so you may not see it so the thing is energy is constant so emulation uh, simulation is correct let's uh, run this code okay so it is tracing a helix and energy is remaining constant right okay yes now uh, so it is uh, tracing a helix as you can see this uh, blue vectors are basically our velocity vectors now as i said this motion is basically a combination of two motion and uh, if you want to see a circle then go to the top view so you can see that from xy plane means in this xy plane view we are seeing a circle a complete circle right and uh, in z direction it is a linear motion so that's the beauty right okay let's jump to our third case this one is very interesting and needs your attention constant electric and magnetic field okay so we have seen uh, what how our uh, charged particles will behave inside our magnetic field sorry now it's time uh, for electric field now mathematics will be a little bit complex but uh, here is the solution okay so this is 
our uh, Lorentz force equation with some electric field okay and ma magnetic field in z direction okay why z direction because it is easy to uh, solve this equation if magnetic field is in z direction so if you solve this thing you will get this equation three equations of velocity and three equations for position now in this uh, uh, equations this uh, first terms means this uh, xc minus r per per perpendicular into some uh, cos term and for y some sine term we are getting a circular motion right as we have seen in first example okay let me go to the slide okay so if we uh, see the first those first term they are same as this equation okay this uh, sine term and cos term okay but uh, okay sorry uh, due to electric field we are getting this linear equation okay this uh, velocity is linear due to electric field but one extra term we are getting this e divided by b here and here and obviously if it is uh, in the equation of uh, velocity then it will also reflect on our equation of position so what is this for electric field we have this sine cos term and for magnetic field or or for only electric field we have this equation but if we combine the this two uh, fields we have some extra terms what is uh, what it is so here is the answer guys this extra term is called drift velocity and it is perpendicular to both electric field and magnetic field okay so this uh, thing is called drift velocity yes now uh, this one is for some uh, special case right uh, as i said our magnetic field should be in a z direction but if we generalize this thing okay then we have this type of equation e cross b divided by b square okay so this is the general uh, equation and uh, how you can visualize this like that suppose that uh, there is a plane in which we have our electric field vector and magnetic field vector and according to this cross product what will happen is our uh, drift velocity vector will be perpendicular to this both vectors so due to right hand rule we can turn our screw from electric field to magnetic field and what will we will have is vector which is perpendicular to this uh, plane here's the example now here i should mention that this drift velocity is independent of charge okay so for positive and negative charge drift is going to be the same okay so here magnetic field is coming out of my computer screen and uh, electric field is in the downward direction and if you do the cross product of this thing you will get drift in this direction as you can see here this is the direction of drift okay so let's uh, simulate uh, this scenario and uh, let me consider one example so consider a particle having positive charge and initially it has velocity vector in xy plane if such particle is kept in a environment where magnetic field is in z direction and electric field is in x direction what would be its trajectory okay 
also study the energy profile of such system so let's uh, simulate this tough example okay so yes uh, our tmax is 20 units sorry and uh, let me comment this example we have completed this example 3 this is example 4 e cross b okay so let me initialize my algorithm okay in this example we have some electric field so in this electric field section i am sorry i am uh, introducing some electric field in z direction as you can see here ex is equal to 1 right so let me run this uh, scenario where electric field is in x direction and magnetic field is in z direction okay it's time for plotting okay what happened so let me run this thing okay i made some error guys okay sorry i forgot to uncomment this thing yes that's why we were getting some uh, error in that uh, total energy so you must uh, uh, keep in mind that if we have electric field then we should change the potential energy accordingly okay uh, magnetic field does not work but uh, electric field does work on charge so that's why uh, you should uh, consider this potential energy so let me run sorry let me run this thing again okay so now it is correct okay so this time our energy is constant this total energy is constant and uh, this orange curve is our kinetic energy and this uh, green curve is our potential energy so yes let's see how our animation will look like okay so here is our drift okay so in this view you may see that it is drifting in a y direction okay so let me i'm trying to fit this entire trajectory in uh, one plot so yes it is correct now so as i said our magnetic field is in z direction means on z axis right and our electric field is in x direction means this x direction and where is our uh, drift velocity it is in completely different direction in y direction as you can see here it is in y direction so it is perpendicular to both magnetic and electric field so let's uh, jump to our presentation guys yes so we have concluded that in this case total energy remains constant but il as electric field does uh, work on our particle we should change our potential energy term and uh, this equation we have also verified this equation through our simulation now let's see some uh, application so uh, very uh, big application of uh, such concepts are in electron tube and why it is important because you may find your this electron tube inside your television uh, screen or in your oscilloscope in your uh, laboratory physics laboratory you may find this type of oscilloscope 
So in this type of uh, instruments, we have elect, uh, electron tube. And uh, here's the picture of ele electron tube. As you can see here, this is the ray of electrons. And here, some guy is applying magnetic field externally. So here you can clearly observe the bending phenomenon. So that's why uh, it is very important to study the trajectory of a charged particle in a electric and magnetic field, right? Now, before I go, here's the general version of our drift. So as I said, we have this equation of uh, E cross B drift, right? E cross B divided by B square. And from uh, our knowledge, we know that force due to this electric field is equal to Q into E. And if you if we uh, rearrange this term, what we will get is this general formula. Force divided by charge cross B divided by B square is our general drift means uh, if we have some constant force, then we have this type of drift. Now, one thing you must notice here. This E cross B does not depend on charge, right? But this general expression does depend on charge. That means that forces like uh, gravitational force, as you know that, uh, force due to gra gravity is m into g right so such forces will also create drift in our uh, devices like uh, tokamaks so we have to take care about this drift as they may cause some instabilities inside our uh, tokamak device or a uh, plasma device so this ends the second part guys hope you have enjoyed and before i go here is the book recommendation Fundamentals of Plasma Physics by J.A. Bettencourt and uh, I must mention that I have taken this uh, solutions from this book. So this, uh, this is the summary of this part 2. We have discussed the uh, trajectory of uh, charged particle in uniform E and B fields. And uh, we have also discussed uh, E cross B drift. And in next part, means in third part of this uh, tutorial series, we will discuss some very, very interesting phenomenon. Grad B drift, curvature drift, and magnetic mirrors. So, see you guys in the next video, and bye for now.